G'day everybody, Nick Dingle here with another Unity series and it's about damn time on creating a virtual reality tower defense game from scratch and we're going to be targeting Android phones and specifically Google Cardboard headsets. Now the reason I think it's a good idea to do Google Cardboard and Android above all else is A, Android is easier to develop for on a Windows machine and Cardboard is a lot easier to access. Okay, Daydream and HTC Vives and Oculuses are just way too expensive for majority of people. So we're just going to do the Cardboards. Okay, if you don't have Unity 5.6 or above, you need to go and get that now because otherwise it won't work. And if you haven't set your Unity up for Android development before, click on the first link in the description and I'll show you how to do that pretty damn quickly. Okay, one thing I really want to preface with this project is my series have never been about graphics, sound or polish. They've always been about functionality, gameplay and leaving enough gaps in there for you to be able to replace, develop and evolve things to end up with your own game in the very end, okay? So that's what this is all about. It's about getting functionality and gameplay in there and actually showing you how to do these things and keeping sort of virtual reality development in mind while you're creating something from scratch, okay? So let's actually have a look at what we're gonna create. So this tower defense game is very basic as you can probably see. We have the purple goal on the left, we have the spawn point on the right. Enemies come from there and you can place turrets anywhere along these orangey blocks which I call the wall. The other place is if I look up this is our purchase space that I like to call it. We have the wave counter, we have money, I have a regular tower which I'm going to rename when we do this $40 each and the idea is when you're using a virtual reality headset there's only really two ways to interact with the game. There is moving your head and there is clicking the capacitive button or just the button on the side. Now if your headset doesn't have a capacitive button because you made it yourself or something then you're not going to be able to do this I'm sorry because I need that button. So the idea is they're going to be able to click on the button up here that generates a tower. They can then place it onto one of the walls down below using the button again. And then they can just watch the whole game unfold. So tower defense actually lends itself really, really well to tower defense. Let's have a quick look at how it works. So I hold the alt key and you can see we've got this little reticle. I can click, create ourselves a tower. And I can place it anywhere across the wall as you can see. So I'm going to put it here. I'm going to go grab another tower quickly. The wave's about to begin. All right, you can see the little balls come out. They've all got health bars and everything. If I turn around quickly, you can see our little goal has a health bar as well. And as we kill things, we earn more money. All right, and then we can buy more towers, obviously, as they come in. Now, the thing that I'm most proud with this probably is actually the wave system, okay? Because each wave is set up into segments and you can customize how many guys there are, how far spaced apart they are, what different enemies appear in what order, and different things like that. So there's some pretty cool things that you can do if you want to spend the time on it. And let's chuck a third one maybe over here. Thor, shits and giggles. All right. Anyway, I'm pretty sure you get the point. It's a very basic sort of standard defense game. You won't see any more than the little spheres coming out. But as I said, it's never been about graphics for me. It's always been about functionality. Now, I'm going to create a brand new project now. So I'm going to get rid of this guy. Let's, let's reopen Unity. As you can see, I'm using the new 2007.1 version. Now, this is actually going to be able to run back to version 5.6. So you don't need to worry if you've only got 5.6. I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to call this one VRTD. I'm going to put a 2 on the end. Basically, because I've already got VRTD, so Virtual Reality Tower Defense. And I've obviously got to distinguish it. I like to save everything I make on the desktop these days because I use the collab feature built into Unity and it's fantastic. All my projects live up in the cloud now and all I have to do is just download them on any system I'm working on. It is fantastic. Uh, let's create that project. And I just want to quickly say, when we're creating this project, um, I'm going to be sort of doing this as though I would be making this from scratch, okay? So I'm not going to just sit there and create all my materials and all my textures and then all my scripts. I'm going to do it piece by piece just to show you what it actually was like when I developed this game to start with, okay? It's not going to be obviously perfect, but it's going to be very, very similar. Now, before we begin, I need everybody who is doing this to go and download the Google SDK for Unity. All you need to do is click on this button. It's only 18 megabytes. Thankfully, it's nice and quick. It's much smaller than Unity itself. And when you've got that, the first thing we're going to do is open that up and get it into our project, okay? Just like so. There is only two things that I untick inside this package because I don't want everything. First one is the demos. I don't need any of that stuff. And the second one is this GVR video player. I don't think it's that big, but I don't need it. 
Now there is lots and lots of stuff in here that we're not going to use, but you don't need to worry about it cluttering up your project because Unity never ever uses more than it has to. Okay, only packages the bare minimum. Oh, where'd you go? There you go. So I'm gonna hit import, let all that bring in. Okay, and then quickly explain that this entire series is going to be five videos in total. This one, we are just gonna set up the basic level and the camera system and just get you a little bit of experience in all of that kind of stuff. And the next video, we'll get into the hard stuff. Okay, lots and lots of scripting. Now, before I do anything else, I wanna set up my project so it's an Android build. So I'm gonna to go to file. I'm gonna to go to build settings. And we're gonna click on Android and hit switch platform. Now, if you don't see these settings, that means you haven't installed the Android component for Unity. So you need to go and download that, come back and install it. So I'm gonna hit switch platform and that's gonna change all my picture formats quickly. As it does. And then we've just got a couple of settings that we need to do over here in the player settings. So click on player settings. Okay, I would suggest change your company name. I'm gonna go Dingle education okay come on down and we've got a number of settings in here the first one and the most important one is virtual reality supported tick that baby click the plus and make sure you've got cardboard in there okay otherwise what we do is not going to work by the end of this video as we come down there is two more settings i have to change the first one is the package name so what you do is you make use a basically a website format but in reverse okay so you can see it's got com company product name so I'm gonna go net.dingle, if I can spell, edu, dot, um, td, tower defense. Okay, over here, minimum API level, I'm gonna to change to 4.4, which is the bare minimum of Android that supports cardboard. Now, if you've got all those settings, you're good to go, and I'm good to go. Okay, so let me turn this off. All right, and we're gonna create all of our folders, ready to store all of our stuff. Now, I'd usually do this at the beginning of a project, because I generally use these folders every single time. So I'm gonna create the first folder, which is materials. The second one is going to be prefabs. Next one, scripts. And then finally, textures. We may not use this one that much, but I'm gonna probably do a few things with it. Now, if I would generally make a few more folders than this probably in other projects, but I don't actually need them for this one, like models would be another one that I definitely use most of the time. But I'm gonna create it using all the built-in 3D objects for this one. So it's time to actually set up a level and actually get something that we can look at. So first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of this directional light. See you later, mate. Okay, and we're gonna create our ground. So I'm gonna right click in our hierarchy, create a plane, okay? I'm gonna call this guy ground, and I'm gonna tag him straight away as ground as well. So I'm gonna add a tag, hit the plus, come on, there we go, and call it ground. Now, whenever you do this in Unity, you know, you click add tag, you put the tag in, you always think, yes, done, good to go. You need to make sure you actually click back on the object you had and actually go and tag it. There's one thing that always annoys me about Unity. I wish it didn't say add tag, I wish it said like edit tags. Something like that. It actually doesn't make a lot of sense. But anyway, so one thing I just want to emphasize, if you don't know why I got you to tag that straight away as ground, the simplest thing I can explain, if I know an object is going to be used in some kind of collision code, then I tag it straight away. Okay, I know the ground is going to be used in collisions to do with the bullets when the tail is just shooting. So I know straight away that I'm going to create a ground tag for it. Okay, it's just one simple little thing that you can think of every time you create an object. So... Second thing is to make sure his positions are zero, zero, zero across the board. Okay, we're gonna resize him. So I'm gonna grab my scale tool, rip, resize him right up. And finally, let's create a grass material and stick it straight on him. So let's go to materials. Let's right click and create material, grass. And the color I've chosen for this one is 99 on red, 235 on green, 86 on blue. And that seems about right. Now. Every single material I create for this project, I'm going to make it sort of a matte finish. I don't want this shininess to it. So what I'm going to do is turn the smoothness to zero. You see you get a bit of a matte sort of color. And the last thing I do is turn off the specular highlights. And that makes it a very flat sort of surface. Okay. I don't know why, but that's just sort of, I suppose, the theme that I was going for with this particular game. All right. Whenever I create an object, I'm happy with it. And I know I'm going to use it more than once. It's time to create a prefab. So I'm gonna click on the prefabs folder down here. 
and drag around straight in there. Pretty much, I'm gonna do this with every single object that I would use in another level, or at least more than once in a single level for that matter too. So let's create our walls that I had prior before. So I'm gonna right click again, but we're gonna use a cube this time, all right? Now I wanna quickly emphasize that the way I designed the level in this game is that everything is based around units of one. Okay, so every piece of wall you saw in the previous game was one, the gaps in the paths were one, okay, the towers took up a unit size of one. Okay, it just keeps things really simple and really easy to use. All right, so the first thing is let's call this guy wall. Again, he's gonna be involved in some collisions, so let's add a tag called dot wow. Oh God, wall. All right, not too bad. So come back here, call it wall. And we're gonna create another material for him. So materials, right click, get material, call this guy. Funnily enough, wall, you're probably sick of saying the word. And this color, what did I choose for him? 208, 122, 12. Gives me a darkish orange sort of color. Turn off the smoothness, turn off the specular, drop that on there. And we're pretty much right to go for this guy here. So before I create a prefab out of him, I actually wanted to set his position now, it doesn't actually matter which order I do this, but I'm just gonna change his Y to 0.5. And you can see now he's sitting just on top of the ground. He's flush with it. So let's create our prefab. Drop it in there. And I'm about to set up the entire level that we're gonna be using for the rest of this video series. So before I do that, I wanna create something to organize all these objects that I'm about to create. Because I think in the final version, I had about 80 pieces of wall. And that would be horrible to look at in the hierarchy. Well, I'm gonna right click and create an empty object and you'll notice that everything I create, by the way, is zero, zero, zero to begin with. Just make sure that this one is too. And now any organizing object, I put square brackets around it and I'm gonna call this one environment. All right, so you need to make sure that this guy's all zeros, that the ground is all zeros and that the wall is only 0 0.5 on the Y because now I'm gonna drag them into environment Okay, and I don't want their coordinates to be stuffed up. Okay, if you see any weird numbers with your wall or your ground, just simply change them before you continue. I'm gonna put the directional light in here too, just because he seems to be part of the environment, I mean, logically. And when I'm done, I can just collapse environment. You can see it's nice and organized, but let's expand that, click on the wall, and it's time to start setting up the level. So I'm gonna click on the move key. I'm gonna move this guy down a couple. And this is gonna be our bottom wall here for the level. And I'm gonna set up all those different paths that you saw before. And hopefully you know about control D, which is duplicate, because I'm gonna use that lots right now. So I'm gonna duplicate once, Oops. highlight the other one, duplicate again, and then one more time. I'm gonna select five on that side, then to this side, and then let's do the top. Highlight all of them, control D, up there. All right, and let's start doing the columns. So you can see I'm actually dragging and yeah, actually, yeah, that's right. Everything's facing this way. Now, if you don't know which way your world is facing, you simply have to look at the blue arrow. That shows you the direction that your world is facing. So the reason I turned around is because I realized that, yeah, everything was looking that way. And it's probably a good idea to actually look the same way. I don't know how I got turned around like that. That was a bit weird. Okay, and you can see how this is all gonna sort of work. Okay, everything is pretty basic. Click, highlight all those, duplicate. By the way, if you don't know how, oh, I just realized I didn't explain this. But with me moving everything, you can see it's moving in one unit at a time. It's actually because I'm holding the control key as I do it, okay? And it's really simple to just get into the habit of doing this when you're doing little prototypes. Okay, let's fill in that gap there. And that looks pretty much like what I had, except for it's a bit backwards. I've got the entry point on the left and my goal is gonna be down here on the right. Whatever, that sounds fine to me. You ask me, and you can see we have created, yeah, 69 pieces of wall, and I can just collapse the environment, and you can't see a single one of them. It's really nice and organized. Now, before I finish up this video for the second part, we are going to set up our camera so that we can actually see what it's like to be on the phone in a Google Cardboard while we're developing, okay? Because it's just good to keep continually testing that particular learner. So what I'm gonna do, when you're working in virtual reality environments, you can't actually work with what's called a, I call it a raw camera, it doesn't really make sense. 
but you need to put the camera on a tripod. And that sounds very weird, but you do. So what I'm gonna do is create an empty object here. I'm gonna first of all call him camera tripod. It's a difficult one. I'm going to set his positions to all zeros, just so I know roughly where he is. And then we drag the camera on top of the tripod. Now the other thing too is the camera already had some settings on him. He had one for Y and minus 10 for Z. And I'm gonna clear those as well. So it's just all zeros for him. Oh, I can see some Z fighting there. Did I accidentally, no? I think that's the shading. I was just seeing this and I thought it was Z fighting. I'll talk more about that later. Anyway, so with that done, okay, what you need to do now is whenever you wanna move the camera or rotate the camera, make sure you're using the tripod. You're not actually using the camera itself. So what I'm gonna do is pull this guy out of the ground like so, rotate him down, holding control still. You can see we're pretty much right. I'm just gonna pull him up one more and pull him across one. That's bang on exactly where I wanna be. So I need to rotate him back up in a second, but we need to set up the camera so it works with um, the Google Cardboard. So this is the first and only time we're gonna delve into the Google VR folder. And the first thing I wanna grab if I go to prefabs is this GVR editor emulator. So what this guy does here is he allows us to emulate head movements while we're inside the editor. So it's really easy to do. But before we can use him, you need to fill in this camera, generally speaking. So I'm gonna drag the camera on top of that. So it looks like so. All right, when you've got that done, there's a couple of other things I wanna do, but let's test it first. So I'm gonna maximize this on play. And the way the emulator works is you see that when I move the mouse around, nothing's doing anything really. But if I hold the Alt key, this is like I'm moving my head left and right and up and down. Okay, and if you wanna do a bit of different emulation, you can hold control, and that's like you're tilting your head left and right. That's your, your, your tilts, or what do you call those? Can't even think of the word. Someone in the comments will tell me I'm, not, I'm sure of it. Anyway, so I'm gonna rotate this guy back up. So I'm gonna click on the tripod, put a zero on that, because obviously when you put the cardboard on initially, you're gonna be looking straight ahead, and then you're going to look down afterwards. So it's really, really handy just to use this editor thing. You can just hold the alts, look down, and you can even let go to leave the camera in that sort of position. You can spin it all around if you really want to. Anyway, there's three more things that I wanna, sorry, two more things that I wanna put in this project before we finish up. The first one is I wanna get a reticle right in the middle of the screen so the player can see where they're looking and they can aim at things. And you find that unto, under the prefabs UI. And it's this GVR reticle pointer. So what you're gonna do is drag that onto the main camera so he's a child of. You get him, doesn't really matter about its position because it, when you start the game, you see that we get that little dot. And when we mouse over things that we can click on, it gives you that automatic expansion that you saw that I had in the other project. And finally, there's a third thing that I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate to you because we can't use it right now, is this event system prefab. All you need to do for him is drag him into your hierarchy, okay? And that's actually the whole game set up. And I'd suggest get used to the whole emulated controls of the camera, just play around with it, look around, try the tilts. I cannot think of that word, it escapes me right now. Before I finish this video, I'm gonna hit Control S to save my scene. I'm just gonna, actually yeah, I should make a folder called Scenes. And inside that, I'm gonna call this Level 1. Simple as that, guys. Uh, thanks very much for watching this video, guys. You know how to do it, and I really appreciate you sticking around. For the second part of this video, we are gonna get a little bit more dirty. We're gonna start creating our towers, okay, and getting it shooting. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much.